Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to be taking you through my top books that are written by Asian, Black and other ethnic minority writers. If you want to educate yourself about race, about BAME experiences and just anything like that in general, I thought but in one video for you guys. Literature is such a powerful tool to educate and so many things can be said in books that are often overlooked. So I thought these books are so politically charged and hold so many stories that are both harrowing and beautiful all in one that it just, I just had to share them with you. So when I am filming this now, this is during the aftermath of the events that happened with George Floyd after he was murdered at the hands of police in America. I'm sure you guys know all the stories so i'll just leave that there but there is links in the description if you want to help out in any way if you want to donate on any petitions find out other ways that you can help it's all in the description for you as well as all the links to these books all in there so if you miss anything it's all there for you don't worry as i was looking at all these posts that were bringing to light awareness of the situation with george floyd and also the situation of general police brutality and institutional racism throughout america but also the uk as well we're not exempt from this at all it goes on here as much as it goes on over there and if you don't believe that then do your research so as i was looking through all of those posts i just thought what can i bring how can i help my followers be aware of this and understand experiences of those from bame communities and i thought books and instead of posting them in my story, I just thought I would bring them here for you guys because one of the best things you can do to combat racism is actually educate yourselves. If you want to know what is on this list, then just keep on watching. Okay, so I first thought that we would start off with some poetry. So the first one we're going to talk about is the collection by Audre Lorde, The Black Unicorn. It covers everything, so from rage to tenderness to appreciation to hate. She was a black woman, a feminist, a lesbian. So she writes from all these sorts of personas all of these sorts of perspectives bring to you her life experience as well as the experience of other people around her and those that she knows and then we have milk and honey by ruby core and this is split into four chapters but a lot of the poems are really short so if you're someone that doesn't really like to read a lot or your attention span span just isn't there the poetry the verses are just really quite short. I'm not gonna lie, I was reading some of this stuff and I was like, whoa. Um, but yeah, this is a really good one. Moving on to prose now. So the first one we have on the poll, these are in no particular order by the way, is Jackpot by Nick Stone. And I actually have a review of this on my channel already which I'll link up here for you and also in the description. But this follows a girl called Rico and she is someone whose family suffers financially, someone who can't afford healthcare. She has all these preconceived notions of a lot of her classmates and a lot of her friends, how their lives must be etc etc as we all do. Now this one isn't so much about race essentially but more so about these preconceived stereotypes that we impose upon people without actually realizing that one is really good i would check out the review for more kind of in depth about it so that one is really good for kind of breaking down those stereotypes and making you actually think about other stereotypes that you impose upon other people okay so the next one it's a very large expanse of sea by tahara mafi but this is by mafi and if you heard her name before but you're not quite Quite sure where she is the amazing author of the Shatter Me series and um, this one is actually a semi-biographical novel it is written from her own point of view as a th I think she's Persian a Persian woman someone who practices Islam and what life is like for that individual post 9-11 America so I haven't actually read all of that one yet only the first I think a few chapters so I can't comment on how good it is and how much I like it but I know that a lot of people do really like it and if you're looking for something that is from the point of view from a young woman who practices Islam and if you want to look more at that aspect and that is a really good place to start so this is the hate you give by angie thomas and it follows these two friends after one of them is shot by police and it follows them the friend that witnesses the shooting and what she chooses to do with the information what she's witnessed if she decides to stand up all of that stuff i have not actually got around to reading it you can see the spine is 
untouched. It's just one that's been on my shelf and I just keep thinking I need to read it, I need to read it, but I think it's definitely going to be next on my list now. And the next one we have is a memoir. So this is Red Dust Road by Jackie Kay. So she is a Nigerian author and this is basically her documenting her life right from from as early as she can remember all the way through to trying to discover who her original birth parents were and then when she visits her actual father in Nigeria and she goes through her own journey of self-discovery and you learn about her life and how it was for her growing up as the daughter of two white parents a different way that you can look into reading about race and reading about ethnic minority experiences now the next one she's brilliant she's amazing again there's a review up on my channel so this is i'm not dying with you tonight by kimberly jones and Ellie siegel this is i'm not dying with you tonight this follows two girls on the night that a riot breaks out in their hometown you have one white girl and one black girl i'm not going to go too much into it because again the review is up there and it's basically their journey throughout the night how they have to rely on each other how they have to let go of their own prejudices how they have to let go of their own stereotypes this one is just amazing it has interchanging point of view so you can see both perspectives that of the white individual and that of the black individual and you can see how the events of the night affect both of them differently even though they're experiencing the exact same things so this one this one needs to be added to your list because this one is amazing so we've got noughts and crosses next by mallory blackman this book this series is incredibly written it's an incredible story it i just i couldn't recommend it enough to enough people and if you're not a reader there is also a tv show of it so you got no excuse so it follows callum and sefi in a world where the roles of race have been reversed white individuals are seen as the lower class whereas black individuals are the ones that are of higher class get the better jobs that just the roles have been switched there. This series really puts into perspective the situation at the moment. Okay, so the next one, it's another oldie but definitely a goodie, is The Buddha of Suburbia by Hanif Qureshi. So this one follows the experience of Kareem, who is a British Asian individual. This is a real coming of age story that really reflects what it was like to be someone of ethnic descent in England within the 80s, how they were met with racism and how they were met with prejudice and how there were certain aspects and traditions that were still imposed upon them despite being in this new westernised place. So as well as looking at race, this book looks at a young ethnic individual looking to explore his own sexuality and what it means for him. Okay, so the next one that we have is Wired Sargasso Sea by Jean Rhys. But if you have read Jane Eyre, now this is written somewhat like a prequel to Jane Eyre. It is actually set in Jamaica in the 1830s and it follows Antoinette Coswell and this Englishman that she meets while in Jamaica. It's kind of insinuated that this Englishman is the same one that Jane Eyre falls in love with. Really interesting to see how the black woman is perceived in her own homeland in Jamaica but then also this changes when they go over to England. In a lot of old Victorian literature the black body the black person is someone that is consistently demonized made out to be monstrous but also to be beautiful at the same time to be stared at in wonder and i often think is this something that has really changed much in the past god knows 100 years um and this really brings that parallel to light especially if you look at it as well as from the point of Jane Eyre and you put them side by side. So the next one is Meridian by Alice Walker. If you're into black literature, African American literature, then you would, you would know this woman's name. Alice Walker, honey remember it. This is an incredible read following a woman's life as she joins in the civil rights movement in the 1960s. If you are looking to research more into the civil rights movement, into experiences of the movement, then this is an essential read. It is heartbreaking, it is, it makes you angry, it makes you furious, it makes you rage, all in the same sentence. Now, the next book is Ceremony by Leslie Marmon Silco, and this looks at racism on another level. It looks at it from the perspective of Native Americans and what they've experienced in their lifetime and it's something that you don't really hear a lot about why. They are those who have experienced racism 
at the hands of the privileged white person. They are a group of people that again are underrepresented and not spoken about and are also brushed under the rug. This follows an individual of mixed ancestry who comes back from Japan. He comes back to his Native American land to be with his family and rediscovers his ancestry. So this is one that highlights the pain, the struggle, but also the beauty that Native Americans as a society and a culture embody and how their traditions work. Okay, so the next one is a class. It is beloved by Toni Morrison. Now this is one that focuses more on the period of the 1800s and the period that was coming out of the slave trade and it follows one individual as she comes to terms with the, tra the traumas she experienced as a slave and her life during slavery. Toni Morrison is a influential writer of this topic and if you're going to research and educate yourself into it she's not one that you can just overlook you have to to get on that. The next book that we're going to look into is Children of Blood and Bone by Tommy Adeyemi and this is what I'm reading at the moment. It has me shook. Every single page has me shook. Now this is a YA book that is definitely a fantasy book rather than a realist book. Now don't shy away from that and don't think oh god it's YA fantasy it's gonna be about vampires and whatever. It's not. It is a beautiful book. This world discrimination occurs from the likes of those with magic and those without. However, the ones with magic have had it taken away from them and they've been systematically oppressed for the rest of their lives. Skin colour and race plays a huge role in this as well. I often find Adiemi discussing the character's skin colour, how if they're one shade of brown they are royal and they are of high stature and if they are another then they are maggots and they are poor, they are a peasantry, they aren't someone to be valued. But anyway, it's a brilliant representation of racism, of oppression, of human experience from the eyes of an ethnic minority individual. There are some other recommendations of books that I don't actually have myself, but as I mentioned, looking at reading lists and other various things, I've found some. First off is Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Evaristo. This is a fictional book that follows the lives and struggles of 12 very different characters, mostly women, black and British, as they tell their stories of family, friends and lovers across the UK. I want this one. This one sounds really good. I'm going to add that to my list. I find books with different point of views so interesting. You can tell the author has so much more freedom to play with. And there is also another book by Audre Lorde, Your Silence Will Not Protect You, Essays and Poems. So if you're someone, again, that's more into poetry or maybe more into non-fiction, um, then a collection of essays might be something that is for you. Another book by Toni Morrison is The Bluest Eye. So this one is more about an individual that really wants and longs for blonde hair and blue eyes. That's so that she can conform to the standards of beauty that are extremely westernised and overlooks the beauty of those from ethnically diverse cultures. The next one has actually been on my list for a very long time and I've just never bought it. It's why I'm no longer talking to white people about race. And this is one that is non-fiction and you can pretty much guess what it's about from the title i'm not gonna lie and then we have the good immigrant by nikesh shakula he gathers 20 black british black asian and minority ethnic writers and artists to reflect on race immigration and being other in great britain so if you're interested more so in looking at experiences of racism and experiences of ethnic minority background people in the UK. This one sounds really good. I'm just gonna add all of these to my list. Finally, we have Me and White Supremacy by Leila F. Saad. And this is something that teaches readers how to dismantle the privilege within themselves so they can stop inflicting the damage onto people of colour. If you're someone who is of white descent, you are anti-racist and want to try and reduce the impact you have on others around you, then I think that one sounds like a really good read. So that is it for today's video guys. I hope, I really hope it was helpful. I tried to cover as many genres and as many types of literature as possible so yeah if you've got any other book recommendations please leave them in the comments below you know we can share them out with everyone so everyone can add to their tbr i mean we're in lockdown for christ's sakes we've many times the time to read 
it is now. Let me know if you have any of your favourites there and let me know if you're planning to pick any of these up. I really hope you found this video useful but that is it for today's video guys. If you liked it don't forget to like and subscribe, all of the good stuff down below and I will see you in the next one. Bye!